Production funding for Making It Up North is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and by the Lloyd K. Johnson Foundation. Vic! Victor Power! Oh, oh my goodness, I'm Aaron Brown, host of the Great Northern Radio Show. I've been researching you for years, Vic. I'm writing a book about you. I have so many questions. Ah, it's always lovely to meet a new friend. Okay, I gotta run through these. Uh, what were you like in high school? How did you We're walk? doing a 30-second live like? broadcast hero? here at Hibbing High School, and it's going to be, at least for now, the final Great Northern Radio Show. In November of whoa, 1915. Whoa, hold up there, laddie. You know that I can't answer those questions because I'm dead. <laughs> I'm just a projection of your imagination. Of course, we're pulling out all the stops, trying to make a good show to go out on. Say, Vic, would you start the show? It'd be an honor, me boyo. Live from Hibbing, it's the Great Northern Radio Show. Here's Katie Howe and the Occasionals. Aboard our radio train Forget your troubles With the people you know Come aboard Or the great northern radio show Oh 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 the great northern radio show Okay, here we are. Are we uh, ready, Dan and Dave? Are we good? Okay. Folks, we're going to do the run-through. The day of the show is so intense. You know, it always starts as this, like, mess, and then it turns into something that's really cool. You put yourself out there, it's live. Every mistake you make is well documented, uh, both in the live production, but also your writing, <laughs> you know. Try it again. Again. Okay. How about a Blues Brothers themed go-kart track in the Iron Gate Mall? So you're out there and you're with all these people working hard and it's fun and it's high stress and it's terrifying and then it's over. It's whatever the, the town brings and so it's a choir, it's an organ, it's a bluegrass couple, it's everything and it's so exciting and a lot of times very humbling to share the stage with all of these different talents. We at the Great Northern Radio Show might not be urban planners or consultants. Our paychecks demonstrate that. But we well, it was a show that I started um, for professional reasons, but also personal reasons. I needed something. I was uh, just recovering from alcoholism. I was just dealing with things in my life, trying to figure out what am I going to do that's creative, that's a good use of my time, that, that is something that um, would just keep me busy while I'm dealing with all of this. And, and so I started on the radio show because it was a dream I always had. No, so it'll, it'll, it'll go from the Bob Dylan um, right into the Neil Diamond into Louisa, the seat in the auditorium. Working on sketches, working on, on sharpening things, changing lines, making things work, and it's all the day of, and uh, there's pressure with that, but it's also this joyful kind of freedom that it will happen, whatever happens. <laughs> We're trying to get um, people to laugh at things. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And so, gotcha, like, gotcha. It, it's a stretch. Everybody's from different places, but we come together for this very intense day, and it feels like a bond that um, sort of transcends uh, time and place. It's really fun to be here in Hibbing. I live six blocks from the Hibbing High School. So um, to get to play on the Hibbing Auditorium stage is a huge treat. I'm really excited about it. I think we can work with that. We do this four times a year. That's lovely, but it's like a seasonal thing, and it's every three months. It's just, it's not working. I mean, it's working in that we have a fun time, and the shows are good, but like we, everyone forgets there's a show, we've all got lives, we've all got jobs. It's, trying to get things to go every three months is really hard. There's nothing wrong with the show. It's not ill. Uh, it's in good health, and we could have kept doing it. Uh, I made uh, the conclusion that um, 
I'm just really busy with some other projects. I say it's like a finale because I don't really know what comes next. Yeah, it'll be a grieving process, I think. But, a f but funny. Good evening, I'm Aaron Brown. The Great Northern Radio Show features music, comedy, and stories from northern Minnesota. We're the big, big show from your hometown tonight, broadcasting from the historic Hibbing High School Auditorium. You know, the Iron Range is a unique place with a unique culture. It takes itself very seriously. We've got our own dialect. One thing we can do as the Great Northern Radio Show is we can turn the camera around or the microphone around on the people and we can make fun of our community in a loving way. Whereas if someone else did it, it would be mocking. We at the Great Northern Radio Show might not be urban planners or consultants, but we do have a lot of ideas for Hibbing's future. For instance, about 100 years ago, the city built a network of steam pipes that gave everyone in town access to cheap, clean, efficient home heating. But today, the system is getting old and doesn't work as well as it used to. The town is switching to new methods of heating. So what do we do with the old steam system? Well, how about this? What would you say to a vast underground network of tunnels, sauna tunnels? <laughs> Think of it. It'd be like a sauna city. Everyone's naked, but it's okay. Hey, uh, Ed, uh, how's it hanging? Hi, Gary. <laughs> well, see for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Wholesome, but a little off. It's a family-friendly show put on by warped people. Jillian Ray. <laughs> was one of the few, like, Tonight Show-like experiences that a local band could have. And I will definitely miss the people and meeting all the musicians, following up on the careers of all the people who have been on the show, especially the young people. These are people who have given so much to the Northern Minnesota music community, and they've been doing it a long time. And our show has been a part of documenting that for people to know. So that's a really cool thing that we got to be a part of. anywhere else. This is as good as you can find in northern Minnesota and, and exactly where I want to be for this show. These little towns, they don't get shows. You know, this place doesn't get attention. This is an important part of life too. This is an important place. And so I think we've really found 
a niche there. And we're not the biggest hit in the world, but I think we are the biggest radio variety show in northern Minnesota, uh, and, <laughs> and I, I'm proud of that. Actually, I remember my mother on the phone with the organ teacher when I was six, signing me up for lessons, and I was in the kitchen screaming up and down, screaming, jumping up and down and screaming, I don't want to take organ lessons, I don't want to take organ lessons, and so here I am. Here you are, and if you don't know it, if you're from Hibbing, you know Vicki because she plays uh, weddings, funerals in great quantities, and of course graduations. And so, Vicki, what's it like to be part of like these life moments for virtually everyone in town? I play for a lot of people. I know them, and it's really kind of sad, but, but it is really an honor to do that for them for their final mass or their final church service. And here you are at our funeral today. And, and there you go. Here's Vicki Gornick on the organ. We are using the Barton organ. There's, I think, only two or three of these in the whole world. And it's designed to be an organ that plays almost an entire symphony's worth of instruments. I mean, this is something that wherever we go and, and uh, whatever town it is, you feel like you're giving them an injection of joy and pride in their town, in the area. You know, it seems like as we get more connected via the internet and everything else, we lose track sometimes of the things that make our communities great and the things that hold us together. And I think that this show does a great job of communicating that. Rural areas like northern Minnesota present unique challenges for census workers. So the 2020 census is going high tech. You can respond by phone or online or by paper. But for those who don't respond, the U.S. Census Bureau still conducts door-to-door -door surveys just like they did in 1790. Hi, I'm Pat Jones. I'm with the U.S. Census Bureau. We haven't received a response from you. Could I ask you a few questions? Your answers are confidential. Oh, oh well, hello. I, I, I guess so. Oh, Fuzzles, you stay in the house. So, what's your name? Uh, well, it's Kathy Smith, but, but I prefer Cat. <laughs> you live alone at this address? Oh, no, no, I live with 17 other fur people. Three were born in Mexico. Can you count those two? Well, the census does count all residents, no matter where they were born or whether or not they were citizens. But we do only count human beings, not cats. Are you the only human who lives here? Human, yes, I suppose, but, but that's a travesty. No wonder cats are unrepresented in Congress. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, I'm Pat Jones. I'm with the U.S. Census Bureau. Could I ask you a few questions? Census, huh? Well, uh, I can tell you my sense of smell is my best sense. <laughs> you know, I can uh, sniff out uh, an electrical fire from probably half a mile away. No, not that kind of census. I mean, Census Bureau, we collect data. Oh. What is your name, sir? Uh, Joe Miller. Do you have any miners living in the house with you? Oh, yeah. Uh, we got five of us miners here now. Uh, we, uh, we split the rent so we can buy more snow machines. How old? Oh, they're new. <laughs> we wouldn't do that for used snowmobiles. <laughs> no, what are the ages of the miners? Oh, well, geez, I don't know. Uh, Johnny's 48, I think. Uh, Jimbo, he's 50. Uh, we just had a party for him. Uh, Bobby, I think he's 55. Oh, and Art, uh, he, he looks 50, but he's kind of a health nut. Could be 60, who knows? Guy's a wizard. So no one here is under age 18? Uh, not physically, no. Uh, emotionally, perhaps, but... Uh, those are depths we do not plumb. 
And hey, speaking of new residents on the Iron Range, our friends, the Reynolds and Clancy from Hibbing and Duluth, respectively, well, here they are. There's sugar on the roof. Let's go. <laughs> some water and I'll go get a bail and we'll meet where it's easier to walk. Birds, babies, and wings. And she always said that the road ahead was nicer if you walked on the side. So if that's where you are, that's where I'll be. Just looking for flowers in the dish. The show does something important in reminding um, a disparate set of communities on the range of the arts and culture that exists in their community, that there are musicians and writers and actors, and to pull all those people together to make something really unique and special is um, a huge value to the community. I have to make an important announcement. We have decided to put the Great Northern Radio Show on hiatus. We are not planning any new shows in 2020. A Aaron, what's a hiatus? Oh, oh, look, a small child has wandered onto stage. Uh, yes, little Louisa, a hiatus is like a break. We're, we're taking a break from the show. Will we ever get to hear the show again? That's the best thing about a hiatus, maybe. Maybe we'll get to hear the show again. You never know. The trade magazines all say that hyper-local regional variety shows are the future of public broadcasting. Really? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice, yeah. Wait, so the checks will stop? Yes, those are done. You will need to find other work. Damn it, Aaron! Ah, well, here we are, the Great Northern Radio Show. For the last eight years, we broadcast live from locations throughout Minnesota. You could say that, regionally speaking, we've been everywhere. Here's Katie Haug and the Occasionals. to the broad superior shore he's crossed the flowery prairies over hills and by the shore although he's witty and handsome he's known quite well by all he's well dressed and clean shaven our very own Aaron Brown Aaron has just been this like light of joy he's the brains and the passion behind the whole operation so um, it's been pretty incredible. I think that having a big vision, you can get a whole bunch of crazy people to follow you and do something 
really special and it creates community and vision and it brings people together. As we glide along the woodland on the Great Northern Radio Show. This was a, it was a wonderful night, but it was obviously bittersweet. Um, tonight was the first and only night we threw our papers down as we were going. For that, just gave you that sense of slipping away. You know, for me, it's sort of a sweet ending. I love hanging out with my band and getting to meet all these amazing musicians. But I'm also really excited to see what happens next. You'll hear that sweet sound coming from the Great Northern Radio Show. People say at the end, you see your life flash before your eyes. I kind of feel like this eight years will be most of it. Oh, here's Aaron Brown, let his name forever stay and always be remembered in our hearts throughout the land. Our first run of shows are over and the curtains round us fall as we go on home to victory on the Great Northern Radio Show. This was a good run and I'm, I'm really proud of what we did uh, and, and what everyone did together. Now listen to that jingle, the rumble and the roar As we glide along the woodlands over hills and by the show Across the flowery prairies to the merry hobos call Glide along the woodland on the Great Northern Radio Show.